we're back at this project, which was the basis of that long video about my Alco methods, the video that I called Alco Secrets Revealed. I forgot to bring my, my gimbal with me today, so this video will be a bit more shaky. The reason we're back here is an, another mistake, unfortunately. This shelf was in the original design, um, meant to be identical to that as, as it is, as it is built, uh, but at a late stage after the customer had, had decided to go ahead, she requested that that shelf could be lowered down for her cookery books. I sent her a, a drawing for approval showing that dimension and it was agreed, but the drawing that was moved into production was a different copy. So this highlighted a, a systems issue with us in the office where we had too many copies of drawings floating around and we didn't have a cast iron system to, to be sure the right one moved ahead. Uh, so it was our mistake, so I've been obliged to come and rip all this out, um, unscrew that shelf, move it down, re-screw it, fill the screw holes, repaint it, and we'll see whether I can um, salvage the scribe strips uh, or whether I have to recut them. So the process of taking it out is, well, we'll get all the strips off first, which will probably involve cutting these cork lines because as you'll have seen in previous videos, I've been working a lot on making those bond better and they have they have bonded pretty well without cracking. So I'll put either just a, a knife blade or a, a multi-tool down there to get them out. Hopefully be able to salvage them and refit them. Um, then there's a, a fixing block that holds the front corner either side of this unit is screwed down and, and pre-screwed into the side. There's one one screw which is just a Spax M self-cutting MDF screw. Very simple method. I just drive that up at an angle, and that one screw is enough to restrain this 18 millimeter back panel. So I've already taken that out, which will allow that to tip and come forward. And if it wasn't such a tall unit, we would have had <coughs> brackets fixed down as a unit fixed back to the wall with it going so tight to the ceiling which i know is something people have questioned leaving that gap but that's how it is uh, the way we fixed it was uh, screws through a drilled and countersunk hole just above that shelf which were then um, capped and in fact we did overpaint those caps to blend the color in so i have to prise those caps off take the screws out we have also wedged a lot of space plugs with glue all down the side, so we'll have to knock those out. I think it'll be quite doable. Um, not sure if I'll take another video because I just want to get this done, but I might drop in some photos of doing it. Um, but there you go, another example of the hazards of fitted furniture made with a team where communication errors lead to quite a costly repair. Okay. I thought I would take another video because I've taken these two screws out and this is like with the chunky shells I had to replace it's quite a good opportunity to see how well built these things really are and whether my fixing methods really work so I need to get the the strips off to start with these strips lately we just use a gap filling adhesive to stick it onto the frame um, a few uh, 16 gauge pins and well that's it and it's not it's really not wanting to come off so to me that confirms I don't really need to be to be dominoing them in, which I do occasionally do. Um, it's, a, it's a problem now, how really to get them off. Oh, there we go. <laughs> right, so that will come off. That's your pink brick. But I really don't see any need for that to be fixed. To be fixed any stronger than it was. Because who's going to be doing that in general usage? That is as strong as it needs to be. So I'm going to struggle with that. So I suspect I'm not going to really get these off without damaging them because I'd have to get something in to prise them. So my best way forward may be to cut those cork lines and see if I can force the whole thing out. Um, but probably they'll jam it, jam it in too far to do that. So uh, we'll, we'll see what we can do. Okay, that'll do. Now, if you watched the first video, you'll have seen I alluded to a mistake, but I didn't really want to shout about it. I may as well show you, since um, I'm already talking about a mistake. 
this piece was accidentally cut by one of us um, to as if it was going to be that piece um, and we didn't have another prepared pre-painted um, routed piece so I had to spend a bit of time you may remember I said it, it went into a long day that it shouldn't have done I spent some time uh, quite a pocket hole jointed that I braced it with Craig screws and a piece of pine as you can see let it dry two part filled it over painted it so if you looked really closely you could see the brush painted join but with it being in shadow there it never jumped out at you I'm going to replace that now because we have prepared a uh, another strip so it's kind of a good opportunity to fully fix that with the one over here I think I can probably put that one back on um, and glue in the very slight splits and overpaint them so that so I'll just be able to use that pre uh, that prescribed piece I'm thinking it's a good idea that we scrape these old lumps off so that we, we're not adding a gap. And interestingly, this this pink grip, I'm not sure if you can see this or just in a minute. It, uh, it does scrape off like it doesn't, the, the paint seems to repel it. Like it's surprising it will just come off the, the face of the paint, but the bond is more than strong enough that that strip was not going anywhere. It's just interesting to me that the paint has a certain amount of, I don't know what the word is, repulsion of the adhesive. So Jonathan's just shown here how this unit is built as one. We used to always split the unit round about where his upper hand is. We would, we would have made everything below that as a solid unit with that as the top. And then we would have biscuit, well, domino jointed a top unit on with it. It's like an open bottom mid shelf and the top but lately we found that it's more efficient to make it all as one uh, because with two people you can you can put it on horizontally tip it up maybe with a push stick and then it's just ready to fit so that's how we do it these days i've not shown a whole load of videos of how we assemble these things in the workshop because i've mostly delegated that now to brady and jonathan but this gives you a feel for it the units are made with Confirmat, size two Confirmat screws, which are pre-drilled. So there's a step, a special step to drill bit for that. And they work like metal dowels. They've got more, they've got more substance to them than a typical screw. So they, they weight there quite well. There should have been three screws in that other side as well. We use Craig screws down into the back panel, which is one reason why we use 18 millimeter back panels, because you can lay your back panel on and you're never having to turn the unit. You just drive your screws down there. Uh, that, that'll usually be your first step. Put your side on, put your, your top on, same method, screw them together. And then assuming that you've cut your back panel square, that, that self squares the whole assembly. And we, we do little pencil marks for the heights of each shelf. And then as we offer the shelves up, using a, a clamped on sort of 3D squaring jig that we've made. We just sort of clamp that in place, drill through in one pass, through your side panel, through your shelf edge, and drive the Compromat screws in. So we've used that method for years and it works very well. It also allows us, you can't see, but maybe you can see, allows us to Put screws through the back so that's the one thing that we do after the whole thing's assembled we turn it onto its side we square lines down the back down the center of the shelf and um, by having that substantial back panel we can weight bear at the midpoint of the shelves so we would never fit mdf shelves fixed only at the ends we would always fix through the back panel because you've got confidence then that they won't sag also they are i think they're 25 25 millimeter shelves. So we'd, we'd quite rarely use 18 millimeter for the shelves. It's usually 25, yeah, or 22. So I've never had a callback for sagging shelves. That's something that I can't stand. Um, so MDF used correctly is a very suitable material for, for this type of work. You can see what a finish we get on it. 
Yeah, well, <laughs> very slight orange peeling there. It actually looks better in reality than it does close up, honestly. But you can see it's um, it's a good finish. Now before before I refit this shelf at the new measured position, I'm just going to fill the hole with the old holes. Now you'll find a video about MDF repair elsewhere on my channel. If I get round to it, I may just drop in a link or at least a graphic of that thumbnail so you can find it. Basic principle here, without going into all the detail, is you will be fighting a losing battle trying to fill and repaint MDF unless you take away the fluff and remove any raised ridges from the old hole. So when MDF is, is damaged or maybe drilled into with a not very sharp drill, the compressed fibers will, will lose their firm compressed grip to each other and turn into a bit of a raised fluff. So you're not gonna get a bond to them unless you remove the fluffiness and cut back to solid compressed MDF, leaving a hole that that doesn't at any point project around its rim from the surrounding flat surface. That's your basic principle. So if you can cut back first to that kind of a hole, then fill with two part filler, try to fill as flat as you can, but make sure it's not pitted below the flatness. So you just do a one, a single part fill. I'll mask off as well, because it makes it easier. Um, sand that back to flat and then you can repaint and you don't get that brown rim that can, continues to be raised. So here it is all repaired and finished. Another mistake redeemed. I still dream of the day when the mistake doesn't happen. Hence the games table, if you've been following it. Design it once, refine it, just keep making the same thing. But who knows what will go wrong with that. Watch this space. So it's done. It looks good. You, you wouldn't know unless you looked very closely. So there were holes here. I don't know if you'll see them. We've had three or four coats of paint. You could see them if you look very closely, but they'll, they'll have books on them anyway. I did reuse the strips, and they look as good as they did before. So we've got a couple of spare, a couple spare scribe strips and the top strips that we prepared for this, but it's not a waste because we will use them on another job, as I, I've said actually in a note already in the video that we'll use them, which is another benefit of standardizing the method. Well, finally, just a side note, for those who are interested, I do all the editing of these videos. I do all the editing of these videos on the phone, and up until now I've been using the iPhone SE, which has done fine. Uh, I've just bought the iPhone 8R, which I'm noticing it has a fancy camera. It seems to stabilize reasonably well without the gimbal, so that's a good thing. And it seems to sort of blend the, the darks and lights. So if you notice any difference in the video, that's why. But I've, I've just edited, I just stitched together all this video up till this point, which I'll drop in uh, while Jonathan was, was tidying up. Um, so I've done that in the van. So I know it's ready now just to upload tonight. We're going on to another job now, which we'll hopefully finish this afternoon. I'm not sure I'll film that, I don't know if I can be bothered. Um, so thank you for watching and um, you will see me next time.